Today we're talking about government deficits, one of the few things that both parties seem to be able to agree on. It's a constant looming problem. The other point of agreement? Yeah, but we can definitely increase this budget deficit a little bit. Who cut spending or raise taxes next administration? I hear they're responsible. Turns out that the difference between the amount of money America raised through taxes and tariffs and the amounts of money we spent this fiscal year just almost topped one trillion dollars. One trillion dollars in a year, considering our current debt is twenty three trillion dollars, this spending binge is almost impressive. I guess this is what happens when you put a guy who buys gold and toilets in charge of balancing your budget. The treasury just released their breakdown for fiscal year 2019 and boy oh boy was it a breakdown. My goal today is threefold, the best number of folds. First I want to take a brief look at the revenue streams and spending streams for 2019, according to the treasury. Because I think some of you might actually be surprised where some of the cash is going. Second, I want to look at the changes in costs that grew the deficit 17% from last year. And lastly, I want to contextualize this amount of spending. Because yes, angry comments are hitting his caps lock key and getting ready to tear me a new one in the comments, we did drop a trillion dollar deficit in 2012 as well. One other important housekeeping note, that New York Times article that inspired this piece was actually pretty manipulative and forced me to hit the delete key on massive portions of this script. Yes, I am taking this one personally. It took data from treasury reports in August when treasuries were reporting a deficit of more than a trillion dollars. Because of a rally in income, the end fiscal year treasury report in September that summarized the entire year showed the actual deficit was an almost equally terrible but less flashy $984 billion. So close. Those numbers came out in September and your article was written in mid January. New York Times, I should not have to be your fact checker. Alright, so let's get started by rewriting this with the newest numbers to answer the age old question, where did all my money go? To get specific, because I realize how riveting this all is, I'm going to dive into documents released by our treasury department. They're the best resource for deficit news because they're actually the ones who are in charge of America's pocketbook. This report had a visual aid that provides the perfect amount of detail for this level of analysis. Trust me, you can get into a bureaucratic nightmare territory pretty quickly here. Just page after page of numbers and I'm not going to waste what little hair I have left trying to make that fun to learn about. So let's get to this exciting graphic that I hope I haven't oversold. Its beauty is in its simplicity. Sorry people listening to this in podcast form, guess you're going to have to use your imagination. So we have our revenue, $3.5 trillion, our spending, $4.5 trillion, and our deficit, boo, $984 billion. Of course, a few random interesting things jump out at me when I look at this. First, Man, corporate taxes make up even less federal revenue than I would have guessed. Would have lost my savings on that bet. It's about 5% of our total federal revenue. We make 85% of our revenue out of individual income taxes and social security. Of course, that social security tax is collected with the express purpose of, well, funding the federal government's biggest expense, social security. And our third largest expense, almost tied with defense, Medicare. Still with that chunk out of the way, have fun playing with the rest of my income tax. Now education and transportation might seem comically underfunded in this chart, but most of that money comes from states and localities, so that's not as bad as it looks. To me, one of the most alarming expenses on this graph is the almost fastest growing expense in this country. Any guesses as to what it is? It's gotta be the military, right? Drum roll please. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a news clip to cut to reporting this problem, but it's payment on interest. Now this is the political equivalent to just setting money on fire. 
To be more specific, this is the amount we pay to keep from defaulting on our current debt burden, not lowering the amount of debt we owe, just, you know, keeping it at the same level. Within a decade, more than $900 billion in interest payments will be due annually, easily outpacing spending on a myriad of other programs. Already the fastest growing major government expense, the cost of interest is on track to hit $390 billion next year, nearly 50% more than in 2017. And currently for this year, it's at $380 billion, so hey, we're coming in $10 billion under budget. Now that can buy us one targeted strike. The other main expense are our infamous defense budgets, which we'll go into more on detail when we start comparing yearly spending. Lastly, health, which thanks for being specific, Treasury. This includes Medicaid, research, and well, everything that's not Medicare and falls under the category of health. We have a supplemental security income for old people, people with disabilities, and other populations with little or no income. And after you get out of these line items, the numbers start to get really small really quickly. So now to the second part of the episode. Where did this increase in the deficit come from? Well, we were on a downward trajectory after the Great Recession, a point when our deficit spiked. But then something happened in 2016 that led to a sharp turn in our national budget deficit, back into deep debt territory. Was it another economic collapse? No, it was a combination of old people who just wouldn't die, so selfish, and pumping money into a hot economy. Fortunately for me, the Treasury Department released the same report every year, so we can pretty easily compare them. Unfortunately for me, one of the things they chose to spend less money on was the graphics guy, because this 2016 report was ugly as hell. I pampered you with that first report, but oh, jeez. <sighs> Better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. By the way, thank you to the intern for adding a gradient effect to the graph to make it somehow even harder to read. Anyways, let's compare those numbers with this year. Wow, is this episode slowly being taken over by a textbook? It's at this point when I decided to create a simple Google Numbers sheet, potential sponsor, because frankly, all these graphics were getting a little too unwieldy. It's not the sexiest thing in the world, but frankly, if you've made it this far, that's probably not a huge concern of yours. You're a sharp cookie. Besides, I made it myself, so it's going on the fridge. The first thing that jumps out at me is, wow, in 2019, the federal government collected an additional $355 billion from income taxes and social security taxes. That's more than a third of a trillion dollars in added revenue. This is because when more people have income, more people pay income tax. And America is rocking a record low unemployment rate right now. In that same period though, we lost $114 billion in corporate taxes, which decreased by a third in size. Most of us remember the cause for this one though. American companies are set to get a rather large present this year. The tax that they pay government is set to be reduced from 35% to 21%. Yeah, that'll take a chunk out of revenue. Lastly, other taxes dropped by $27 billion. Now that's not exactly a big deal, but when I was making that graph, I really thought tariffs were going to come through for us on this one and boost that number. Come on, China, pay our taxes. Now this brings us to the fun part, spending that money. In an alarming twist, we saw the biggest growth, if you ignore the part encompassing the entire federal government not covered by these four line items, in a $156 billion increase in social security, and a whopping $153 billion increase in interest payments on debt. Also known as three times more than Homeland Security's budget, the Department of Energy's budget, Housing and Urban Development's budget, and oof, seven times more than NASA's budget. Yeah, we're not landing anybody on the moon anytime soon because sorry, we have to make these payments on debt. 
Of course, we also have a $97 billion increase in military funding because, come on guys, we're a few bombs and targeted strikes away from Afghanistan being a democratic utopia. And $105 billion increasing in Medicare because the government doesn't negotiate and old people have a tendency to get hurt. When Big Pharma has you over a barrel, does it count as a free prostate exam? Now this massive quarter trillion dollar increase in other financing got me a bit curious to see if there were any standout funding increases between departments. I created another spreadsheet because I was on a roll here, and I can tell you definitively, Trump just kind of funds the budget a lot like Oprah would. You get two billion dollars, you get two billion dollars, Sonny Perdue, check under that seat. That's right, two billion dollars for the Department of Agriculture. No one department got a particularly large raise except for health and human services. But most of that cost is associated with the constantly increasing cost of Medicare we got over the previous graph. So that's the incredibly long way of answering the question of what changed under the Trump administration to make this budget deficit so much higher. Now to the final fold. From a historical context, how bad is this? Critics, or anyone capable of reading numbers, will correctly point out that our deficits were larger under Obama's first term than under Trump's first term. And sure, in Trump's first three years in office, he ran larger deficits than Obama's entire second term, but that's history, we don't go into that. For this final fold, I want to look at America's objectively worst budget deficit, 2009, and see how it stacks up to today. Obama wants to keep the money spigot open to fund schools, veterans programs, and new incentives for small companies to hire. These are the investments we must make to create jobs and opportunity now and in the future. The net result is these blue budget books are dripping in red. To begin with, Obama's plan shows the deficit hitting a new record this year. Oh man, you better believe that there was a lot more spending in 2019. Except, nope. Fun fact, we spent more across the board in 2019 than we did in 2009, including that fun little other category. Now, I was so sure that there would have been larger spending under 2009's Obama other category that I checked my numbers against the treasury documents three times. Tea Party, where'd y'all go? We need you. The biggest difference between 2009 and today lies in revenue. Turns out tax collection in the height of a historic financial collapse isn't the easiest thing to do. We raised $803 billion more from income tax in 2019, probably because, again, a lot more people had income today, and every section, including corporate taxes, led to higher income in 2019 for the government. This is where the majority of the 2009 deficit comes from because we had a difference in overall revenue collection between 2009 and 2019 of $1,598,000,000,000 in revenue. There wasn't anything particularly surprising about expenses except that, again, they're across the board larger than they were in 2009, the height of the financial collapse. Now I will say, defense is posting a pretty small growth rate despite the fact that we're giving them record setting budgets. I mean, wait, didn't we just give them a huge amount of funding in the 2019 budget? Well yes we did, and that's why it's important to use treasury documents and not budgets in analyzing the deficit. We gave the defense department $989 billion in 2019. But it turns out, that's way too much money for them, and they ran out of places to spend it. At the end of most years, they send billions, actually like tens of billions or hundreds of billions of dollars back to the treasury to be redistributed. And because of the military, they probably get that money handed back to them with even more money on top of it next year. We're instead comparing amounts spent, not amounts budgeted. Now just to scratch that nerdy economics itch I have, one final question. Were there any standout departmental funding differences between 2009 and 2019? And I'm glad I did this because it's actually super interesting. Well, interesting's relative, but buckle up. 
The first thing that struck me as odd was the treasury spent $200 billion more in 2009 than 2019. What? Oh yeah. The federal government Tuesday began pumping billions of dollars into U.S. banks. Treasury Department Undersecretary Tony Ryan says this comes after a weekend of deal making. Man, even with the bailout, 2019 is spending still more money in that other category. Whoo wee. The Department of Health and Human Services got $417 billion more expensive, most likely because Obamacare expanded Medicaid, and as we went over, Medicare just keeps getting more and more expensive. We pretty substantially increased the size of the Department of Agriculture and the Department of Education, so woohoo! Tough losses though for the Department of Labor and Department of Housing and Urban Development. That's a net loss of $133 billion in funding. Everything else is pretty marginal changes though. So that's maybe the most analytical hot take on our enormous 2020 budget deficit you'll probably ever hear. Never fear though, because we're really tightening up our belt for the fiscal year 2020. Oh man, yes, the Treasury's monthly deficit report shows that our deficits are 11% larger than they were a year ago. I should probably hold on to that Google spreadsheet because my gut's telling me I'm going to be making the same episode in a year. Until then, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube. First, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this group of exceptional individuals by clicking the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe because my New Year's resolution is to get a thousand of you guys, and I'm so close I can taste it. 900 right now. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring, and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.